Hi, I'm Stuart. It's Monday morning and welcome to Sirenet Television. We're going to take a look at a brand new part that's come into the studio this morning. Well, it's not that brand new, but it's definitely interesting when we take it apart. It is the Whelan L32 LFR. They give me notes to help me go along here. Take it away, Chris. Thank you, Stuart. I have Whelan's L32 low profile super LED beacon here, and I'm going to show you some of the inner workings. Going to go ahead, remove the outer dome portion here. Which is affixed with two screws. With the dome screws removed, I can go ahead and now free the dome. And it is on here nice and tight. So if you work around the edges, it'll free itself from the pressure gasket, which is this unit right here. It's a dense rubber seal, it goes around the cast base and basically seals the dome. Go ahead and get that out of the way here. This is your L32's insides. You can see you have four portions that are reflector assemblies with diodes. Top control board as well that also incorporates diodes into it for top illumination. To get to the inside of the unit, you're going to start with removing four screws on the top portion here. With those four screws removed, you can remove the top portion of your beacon. You can see this is where your wiring harnesses connect in. So I'm actually going to go ahead, pull the whole harness out. Give you a look at that there. With the top assembly removed, base opening for your harnesses to go through the grommet. Board assembly again. On the back portion here, two harness quick connect points. Quick connects again, nice and tight. The lead and ground is the red and black wire here. Your beacon's control wires are these four here. You have a sync, a high-low, a pattern default setting, as well as a scan lock for changing your beacon's patterns. Again, quick connect for the harness. Interesting to know, this top portion is actually what makes your entire beacon work. In the corners, you can see there's micro connection points. On the top of each board, you can see there's connection points as well. Two on each. So again, when the top is pushed down onto the unit, it creates a contact point where this then powers and flashes the bottom diode portions here. The four bottom screws here, once removed, will free the entire inside diode and reflector assembly. I'm gonna go ahead, flip this over here quickly. Go 
remove the four base mount screws here. Go ahead and lift this off. You can see this is the cast base assembly, free of all the components. Mount post in the bottom, again, where your wiring hole goes through. So this, once dismounted from the base, is your reflector assembly total of three diodes per side, bracket to affix it into the base assembly there. And if I remove the three screws on the back portion here, I can free the aluminum backing mount portion and remove the actual diode board. So this is your reflector assembly here, free of any other components. And this is your diode board assembly here. Again, total of three diodes. Again, top connection mount points. Rear the unit as well. Interesting to know is once it's affixed onto this aluminum mount here, this basically is acting as a heat sink for each of the diode boards inside of the L32. The heat then dissipates down the aluminum and to the base to spread out to cool the unit. So with the L32 pretty much disassembled here, seems like a good time to go ahead, reassemble the unit up, turn it on, show you some of the features. Take my reflector assembly here, diode board, aluminum mount as well. Go ahead, realign all the parts together. the black mounting screws back into the unit. Good. Your diode and reflector assembly for your side portions reassembled. Basically with these, again, you can see it's a total of four units. I'm going to go ahead, take the reflector and diode assemblies, reaffix them to the base here. An important thing to know with these is they do mount differently to each portion here. They actually step onto each other, really. So you can see here, I'm trying to set these two on top really isn't quite working, the alignment's off. So I'll take these, use this one here, take another of the units, and see now one unit has a bracket that sits lower. So they'll actually now realign properly once screwed down. So with that, I'll take my one that's stepped up taller, set that to the side for now. Take my base assembly here. Reaffix the mounting screw. So 
Now you can see that that diode board and reflector assembly is fixed to the base. Take my other unit here, make sure the stepping on it's correct. Again, this one is a lower step, so it'll go on the other side. Go ahead and hold that. Now you can see we have those two units mounted up nice and snugly. We'll take the third reflector assembly. And again, you can see that this now sits on top of these two properly. Last reflector assembly. Four screws back into the base four reflector and diode assemblies remounted as well. Now I'm going to go ahead, take my top flasher and diode board, pigtail the harness, run it back through the grommet opening here in the base. Go ahead and feed that through. Again, just make sure that you have all your wires fed through. So go ahead, push the top portion back on, realigning the tabs and also the pins to the connections on the top for the side diode boards. So with the top realigned onto the post here, slide it back, lock it in, as well as the connections on the top of the terminals here from the inside posts in all four corners. Go ahead now, take my four top mount screws, Not only do the four top screws here affix the board into the beacon, they also in turn hold the top of the side reflector assembly boards as well. So basically they're sandwiched in. They're screwed in from the top and screwed in from the bottom as well. Tops re-tightened. Go ahead, put my sealing gasket back around the unit here. Before I put the top portion back on the beacon here, I'm going to go ahead, turn it on, so you can take a look at how the reflector assemblies with the diodes, basically free of optics, look. And see, you have your top firing diodes and your four three diode reflector assemblies. Again, pigtail wiring harness here. Take my top, realign it to the front and the rear screw.
So the two dumb screws tighten back in. Go ahead, turn it on here. <clears throat> Give you an idea of now how the optics look with the diodes. So basically with the optics, you create a point where you're not seeing any blind spots in the beacon or basically any points where you're not having sufficient lighting. Basically 360 degrees of unaffected light as well as diodes in the top. Take the white with violet tracing wire here. And each time you touch this to 12 volts, it'll change the flash pattern of the beacon. Go ahead and run through some patterns here quickly. You can also see in some of the pattern modes, turn off the top diodes. So if you're needing a beacon where you don't want to have any light protruding from the top, Whelan's L32 series is a great option for the fact that you can disengage your top firing diodes. If you take the violet wire here, touch it to 12 volts, that activates the beacon's high-low function. See it's reduced the intensity. Take it away from 12 volts, back to full power, reapply 12 volts, low power. The gray wire here is a sink, so if you have multiple L32s, you can tie them together for having properly synced flash patterns. So go ahead, disconnect the red wire here. The white with orange tracing is the beacon's cruise. Turns it into a low glow intensity. Thanks for spending some time with me here on Sirenet Television, taking an inside look at Whelan's L32 low profile LED beacon. I'm Chris, back to you, Stuart. Well, thanks, Chris, that was pretty darn interesting. I'm Stuart, thanks for watching Sirenet Television.